This is a 2007 Porsche Cayman S. This is almost the perfect car for what our show is about. This car was originally $71,000, but this specific one I'm in was bought last year for less than 40. This proves that with smart shopping, you can buy a fantastic automobile within your budget. It's not Porsche, it's Porsche. Yes, with just a, just a touch of snobbery. The owner's manual states, judging by the car you have chosen, you are a motorist of a special breed. Uh-huh. You know the difference between a porcupine and a Porsche? With the car, the pricks are on the inside. Except they know something you don't. When it came out in 06, a lot of people discounted this car as just a boxster with a roof. And while there are a lot of shared components, this is a very specific car. I suspect that this is going to be one of those cars that both Todd and I love dearly. The big difference, though, is that I don't swim around in all things Porsche like Paul does. I don't believe they are the creator of the universe and the answer to all of life's problems. If there were an illegal drug called Porsche, I would snort it like cocaine and beat you mercilessly for money to feed my addiction. The Cayman is targeted specifically at the enthusiast. You're not going to find a lot of people that are just brand shopping that are going to buy a Cayman if they search for a Porsche. So honestly, the biggest problem with the Cayman is the fact that the 911 exists at all. Porsche won't even put their most powerful engines in this car. It's because if they did, the Cayman would outrun its older brother. It's already brilliant to think of it with more power. I don't know where to put that in my head. The Cayman is probably most similar to a Lotus Elise. It's fairly affordable, it's truly mid-engine, with a great light front end, and it's only a two-seater. Except the Porsche is going after a slightly different audience than the Lotus. Well, if the Lotus Elise is like the Ginsu knife of cars, it's ever sharp, but feels kind of cheap. Well, then the Cayman must be the Hattori Hanzo samurai sword of cars. It's beautiful, it's so well built, it's undeniably attractive. I maintain that this car has to be the most beautiful Porsche to date. The styling is not exactly revolutionary. From the front, it looks like every other Porsche made. A blind man could walk in front of this car and go, oh, Porsche, I get it. Look at the Cayman directly from the back and notice these wide hips. It's got beautiful fenders and at any angle you look at the fenders, it's just gorgeous. It's not gonna win any styling awards, it's not gonna win any interior awards, but you're not gonna be disappointed by those things either. I've driven across half the country in a Cayman, and it's amazing how usable it is on just a long highway blast. Yes, there are only two of you, but you have a trunk and a frunk. The interior, it seems kind of plain in comparison to other cars that cost this much, but you have to remember your target market. It's drivers only. Everything you use to drive is completely intuitive. The Porsche Cayman feels almost impossibly mechanical. The six-speed really is that stereotypical rifle bolt feel. Here is a car that feels like it was meticulously screwed together by men. That's not true, but it has a very mechanical, built-by-hand feel. It feels plenty modern, it feels plenty involved, but in a tactile way that's very rare in the modern automobile. The Cayman has the best combination of mechanical components I've ever driven. It's like wearing a backpack. The weight is right behind you, and you can feel every little shift. You can so easily correct the balance of this car. If you ever sat on a ski lift chair by yourself, if you sit in the perfect dead center, every little move you make, you can feel it resonate in the chair. That's kind of how the Cayman feels. You get this very zen-like feeling. Everything is one, including me. If I could measure how much I smile driving this car at low or high speeds, there isn't a car that equals this car. I mean, I giggle like a fool every time I get in this car and drive it. It has that thing, like the Mazda MX-5, 
where it's fun at pretty much any speed. You don't have to just hammer on this car to enjoy it. But when you do, your enjoyment level doubles. The faster you push, the more precise it starts to feel. I think I'm going to go have a moment with myself. Now I like cars that are raw and take a little bit of work. And so I actually prefer the Lotus Elise to the Porsche Cayman. But by a fraction, this is an amazing car that I would happily own. And when you can have this car for half of what it originally cost, I don't know why we all don't buy one. Maybe because we don't have the money, but that's a side note. This car speaks to me. It whispers to my fingertips. It involves me in the driving experience, and that's what I look for in a sports car. Now, anyone who owns or loves the 911 is always going to say that the Cayman is only for those people that can't afford a 911. I disagree. The Cayman S is one of the best sports cars for the money sold by anyone, anywhere. 